People, deluded, I'm back again. Now, obviously, it was a tough season for Arsenal, you know. Domestically, we finished 8th. Europa League, having got to, having disgraced ourselves in the finals against the very team that we beat, obviously, um, in the FA Cup. You know, we lost 4-1 last year in the Europa League. We didn't get anywhere near close to the final this year. And, you know, I don't believe in this coulda, woulda, shoulda. But, you know, you mean... And, again, it's a massive if to assume Arsenal would win two cups. But imagine, considering how poor our season was, if... And, I'm, and again, ifs don't win stuff. If we remained in the Europa League to go with this FA Cup, could we have... Re you know, if we won the Europa League, it would be a decent year or sort of... Not, not decent, but we would have been saved or, you know, momentum. Since the restart, excluding the Man City game, we've been OK. You know, since we boxed Liverpool and City, we've I don't want to say we've taken it up a level, but, and yes, Liverpool, the game was, for, was you know, there's fortune with Alisson and, and Van Dijk, but at the end of the day, we put in a shift. City beat them off the park. Chelsea beat them off the park. So what could this momentum have done, have done for us going into that, people? But we can't deal with the ifs and buts. That's where that conversation let, gets left. You know, we didn't do too good in the Europa League. We were appalling in the league. We're, we're eighth. You know, that, a club like us shouldn't be eighth, but that's where we are now. FA Cup, it is a decent thing for us, you know, and I'm happy to win a cup, you know. There's a case to be said. Obviously, let's be serious. If Arsenal... Didn't win the FA Cup and won top and got top four. Like how this year we was out of the top four, but we managed to grab. Um, grab we finished eighth, but we grabbed an FA Cup. People would be saying that that obviously that you know the, just simply getting top four is more successful, and I don't agree. But I don't necessarily disagree. Obviously, Wenger was killed for it. Top four is essentially a trophy. The financial rewards, definitely what Arsenal could do. You know, getting into the Champions League could really allow us more flexibility in the market and all of these sort of things. Obviously, that being said, players are not in the game to, to, to be top four or finish fourth. You're in it for trophies. I know if I finish playing football, you know, I'm not going to necessarily... Be be telling my grandkids, oh Arsenal were eighth, and we, you know, this and that, we is accomplishment to get fourth. There's no trophies for that, you know. FA Cup, you get a medal, you get a medal, you get it. So it's been a, a mad season, and with it all being done from an Arsenal perspective, you know, I, I just thought I would, I would, I don't even know the purpose of this vid, but just couple thoughts, you know, in terms of games of the season, that like games I thought were good games, you know. Um, I liked. All, I really enjoyed beating Manchester United at, at the Emirates. Um, I think West Ham when we beat them three one, purely because we would we we couldn't buy a win, and I think we were decent in that game. Obviously Chelsea and Man City in the FA Cup respectively. That's always going to be up there with the highlights. Um, I mentioned Liverpool. Liverpool's got to be up there as well. Um, there's a couple of moments, you know, when we beat, who did we beat 4-0? Nil? Newcastle or Everton, one of them 4-0, I could be wrong. In fact, Everton was 3-2, it wasn't the perfect game. Um, I'd say I enjoyed the Newcastle 4-0, I believe that was. Um, what was it? Did we did we beat Villa 3-2? Like, we beat Villa 3-2, I lie. I could be wrong. Um, I think, uh, if I remember rightly, Saka, we booed at the Emirates because Saka was playing amazing and was taken off. I think Pepe did his bit to turn that game around. I felt that game was full of uh, all of emotions. Um, you know, obviously I enjoyed beating Chelsea and the, to draw at Stamford Bridge. I did think it was a decent game within the context. Um, so, yeah, there has been some highs. But in terms of, you know, get back poor games we'd be here all day. I think Villa, you know, Villa's got to be up there um, losing 1-0 to Villa. I'd say both times against Leicester. Well, drawing against Leicester because we failed to manage the game. It's just very frustrating. Obviously, when we lost to, to them at, um, at their place, forgive me if I'm wrong, it was, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't a nice feeling at all. Losing 1-0 to Sheffield United, you know, no disrespect to Sheffield, they deserved it, but I think it showed what belief can do and it just really annoyed me how we were overawed. We, the fans beat us, not the players necessarily. Um, Spurs, it's never nice to lose to Spurs, obviously I've got to throw that in there. Brighton, you know, dropped six points to Brighton, forgive me if I'm wrong, in both matters have been quite disgraceful and have been collapses from a goal in front. I could be wrong on the Emirates one. Drawing with Palace at the Emirates was frustrating and I'm pretty sure that's the time where, you know, Xhaka was doing that. That's all we, I have to include that, you know, Xhaka or the fans didn't cover themselves with any glory. We put it to bed and we've won an FA Cup. But, you know, you can't not say, you know, if we're talking about the whole season, that was a low point for me anyways as an Arsenal fan because you don't want to see that from your players. You don't want to see that from the fans. We're all fighting for this badge. Lovely that it ended nicely, though. Um, what else have we got? Um... Losing to Man City 3-0, well, both times we've lost against City, but losing the 3, where well, we lost 3-0 at the Etihad purely because 
listen, City are a great side, but we shot ourselves in the foot in, in that game. Um, there's been a couple of poor games, you know. Norwich drawing as well was very frustrating for me personally. Same goes for Southampton. Like, mainly that period between playing um, just before West Ham and when we dropped points against Palace, there was a period where we really couldn't buy a win. I think it was six games or so. And on the grand scheme of things, people might be saying you're exaggerating, but I think we were poor in that regards, people. We, there's many more games. In terms of, like, player of the year, player of the season... For me, it's got to be a Bamian. Like it's got to be a Bamian. Like by quite a distance, you know, he's got 29 goals, 22 in the league. You know, he's had suspensions and whatnot. He keeps himself fit. He's, you know, he's done his job. You know, in terms of what I'm expect of someone in August and what I want to see in May. You know, he's done his job. 20 league goals. You know, he's done his bit minimum. 20 league goals. You know, obviously his suspension. I'm pretty sure. You know, in hindsight, if he didn't get suspended against Palace for that tackle, he might have got the golden boot. Again, ifs and buts don't win stuff. We can only deal with the facts. But it's got to be a Bamian. If it's not a Bamian, for me personally, it's Bakayo Saka. I know he was kind of taking out the team towards the end of the season, but I think he deserves it. Obviously, Leno's almost a forgotten man, but I think Leno deserves his plaudits. I do think there has been other good players. I feel Joe Willock's not... Man said Joe Willock. <laughs> Granit Xhaka, since the restart, has been good. Sabayo, since the turn of the year, has been good. Um, Tierney's done his thing when fit. Um, you know, Martinez, as well as Leno, has been doing his thing. There, you know, there's been other players as well doing what they need to do. But I think, you know, they're the only three names really that have been stand out for me nine times out of ten all season. Aubameyang has been scoring goals. You know, most longest drought I saw was after the restart. He had two or three games he didn't score. Saka, you know, we shouldn't have been relying on him the way we was relying on him for that young man. And you know, he's now the number seven. I think he's actually got the second most shirt sold so far after Tierney. So it shows how much his stature has risen. Um, and Leno, you know, for all Leno's faults, because I don't think Leno is perfect stood up to be counted and there was numerous games you know Leno was making enough saves deserved a clean sheet but we're walking away with some mad result and it wasn't fair on Leno um so I'd say them um, player of the year for me goes to goes goes to Aubameyang. Um young player of the year obviously will go to Saka by quite a distance you know um I would say yeah, so I'd say player of the year goes to Aubameyang for me. Young player of the year goes to Saka. Surprise package of the season for me goes to Martinelli. He really should. He could have a case to say. Maybe not necessarily players player, but he could be up there with the rankings. He should have really been given young players. Just I think Saka's done it. Um, obviously the season's ended well. Ended not ended well for Martinelli. Obviously he gets his FA Cup medal, um, but it's you know he's not going to play until 2021. He's out for the rest of the year with an injury and have an operation. But you know we knew he had potential. We heard when he was coming to the club initially he'd be playing 23s football and stuff. He had to be patient. You know he was very much you know one young player on the cusp of the first team. And now you're looking at it. You want him to start week in week out if possible for Arteta. You know we didn't expect that. You know, he's only got three or so Premier League goals. I could be wrong. The bulk of it came in the Europa League. But he's put, you know, one of the highlights of the season. Um, goals of the season probably for another vid. But, and I won't say it's the goal of the season. But Martinelli's dribble through the middle of the park to obviously score at the bridge. Along with, I believe, Aubameyang's against Palace. And obviously... Um, Lacazette's against Spurs for me. Um, I think their goals are the seasons, but he's he, he's played well, man. He's really played. He's really played well, Martinelli. So for me, it's a surprise package. One set people because when I do the goals video, I want to remember what I've just said. So I said Aubameyang versus Palace, Lacazette against Spurs. Well, what other bangers have there been? Pepe's free kicks. Goal against City, goals versus City. There's been a couple goals of the season still. Um, Martinelli's v Chelsea. How can I forget to write it up? Martinelli versus CFC. So yeah, man. So I said, like I said, man. Um, surprise package of the season for me is Martinelli. Didn't you know? Be I didn't have no information. You know, we also unless she was watching a tunnel, which I wasn't. Little information, and he's made a massive impact on me. Um, in how he's played so I'd say surprise package of the season goes to Martinelli young player for me is Saka player of the season for me is Aubameyang um, obviously and let me add it as well dark period is obviously seeing Emre lose his job you never want to see a manager lose their job you never want to go through what we've gone through three managers in a year um, in some capacity so I'd have I didn't say it but you know the whole Emre saga throw that into low moments of the season I know I said goals are the worst games of the season but I'd say low points you know because you can't I can't you know, Xhaka, the Emre thing, obviously not being able to buy a win at a period when we beat before beating West Ham. 
these were all negative periods for us losing to City to get it people so like I said and I keep reiterating surprise package goes to Martinelli player of the season goes to Aubameyang for me young player goes to Saka um Breakthrough star of the season, I'll give that to Eddie and Ketty or somewhat, you know, it's almost like surprise package. But I think, you know, Saka and Martinelli are the ones you're looking at. But I think, you know, Eddie and Ketty, again, it remains to be seen as to whether he's good enough long term. But, you know, he didn't have the best of loan spells at Leeds. There were positives, there were negatives. Few people would have, would have said, if you can't play for Leeds, how are you going to play for Arsenal at this period in their career, as a club, how they are this season? He's backed himself, he's played and he's elevated his status, you know, he still needs to score more, his goals are lacking, his decision making isn't the best, but his work rate, you know, he's elevated his status, he was, Lacazette, you know, he's got he's got a positive reaction to a degree out of Lacazette, Lacazette has had a poor season, but he ends it with 10 goals in the league, a respectable return of sorts, even though he should be getting more. Um, on top of, you know, goals being like catch-up strikers going through moments, you know, to a bit of, a bit of that has to be seeing him lose his spot to Eddie. So, in, you know, he's, he's reacted well. And in the same way, Eddie's, you know, he's kept Lacazette off the bench. He's kept Lacazette on the bench. He's done his thing. So I think Eddie, you know, he's gone from being one of these young players, like how Martinelli was at a point on the cusp of the first team. Now he's firmly a squad option, rotational. He's elevated his status that, that much. And I think, obviously, when you've got Saka, you've got Martinelli, he's not going to get the praise. So I think um, breakthrough star is Eddie and Ketty because he's shown he can, he's shown that, you know, Arteta started him, you know. He run, you know, he'll get a 60 minutes or something, same as Lacazette or so, because of the demands Arteta places on his strikers. He he gives them a break. Um, but we'll have to see what happens, man. Signing of the season is a tough one, people, and we'll get on to that. Flop of the season... Ozil because he's barely played like he's barely played it seemed like Arteta and him were going to have a, a, a new lease of life it, it hasn't quite happened for him um, you know since the restart he hasn't played I don't know what's happened there but he hasn't been involved um, you know Ozil has a lot of critics but I do think he could have been involved more but there's got to be a reason undoubtedly you know Ozil's got to be there I don't in no order I think Ozil I don't think Kalajinac has had the best of seasons I think you know he's definitely had a period where he looked good in the defence in the back three but I would say that um yeah, man, I would say them two. I'd say Kalajinac, Ozil. Uh, I don't think Rob Holden has looked... He's had an injury, but I don't think he's looked too certified when he's played. Um, Socrates hasn't had the best of seasons. He had periods where he was doing all right, but on the whole, he hasn't. Um, you know, as well, off topic, people, big up Mustafi as well. I wouldn't quite say surprise package of the season, and I wouldn't say player of the season, but he had a decent sort of bit of form. Um, and stuff and that ties me up to the next one really underrated season I feel Tierney underrated season injury shagged it but I feel his performances if it's not Arsenal fans no one's banging on about it obviously Arsenal fans might be banging on too much but he's shown he's good 1v1 he's shown he can cross a ball he's shown he's up for the big games he's shown his mentality is different you know all it is with, with Tierney is a fitness thing and for 12, at £25 million pounds, it's a steal like I'm I'm not here to say Chilwell's not as good as him and all of these things, but Chilwell's, you know, you're hearing Leicester say it's going to take a record-breaking offer for Chelsea or whoever wants Chilwell's City as well to buy him. We've got a decent left-back for £25 million, so deals are there to be had, you know. We've got Martinelli for peanuts, Tini, which looks like peanuts, so we're doing our thing, man. So I'd, I'd, I'd say surprise package this season... Or well, underrated season was what I meant to say. Tierney, because injuries have shagged it and not really allowed light to be shined upon him. I'd say Xhaka for his turnaround in his season and in his Arsenal career. Sabayo since the turn of the year. Well, I wouldn't say Sabayo is a surprise because what he's doing now is what I wanted to see from him, really. So remove that. I actually feel Callum Chambers before his injury was in an all right, a bit of all right form. I think he has a, he's had an underrated season by that logic. Um <clears throat> Maybe Mustafi as well, because for me, Mustafi, if it was up to me, Mustafi would have left this club a long time ago, and I still think he should leave, but, you know, he's done all he can to, sh to, to probably get away with staying here another year. He's out to October, but Mustafi's had a decent year. Well, in periods, he's made mistakes, obviously, but, you know, he's, he's done all right. Um, you know, so it is what it is. Looking at our signings of the season... I mean, just looking at our size, signings last season and quantifying them, Tierney, like I said, underrated left back, 25 millions is still, you know, he's, he's a terrific player. I really got a lot of time for Tierney. Similar to that, Martinelli shown he's a bad boy young player with all the potential in the world. We just need him to get back to full fitness and full health. Terrific signing. Pepe, you know, he's had some good and hot periods and I've spoken about him at length, but I think he's shown he can be decent. I would say, if I had to say who's made the biggest impact, I'd probably say it's a toss-up between Martinelli and Tierney because when Tierney's in the side, you see it. Martinelli in a sense of having low expectations and, and what he's doing. Um, Pepe's doing okay. 
um, Ceballos grew since the turn of the year um, and I kind of expected it from August but he's there um, so he's been alright David Luiz has had his periods but at this, of, of playing very well but at the same time you know conceded five penalties uh, and when you have a defence when you have a system that isn't frail that isn't solidified you're always going to see even more mistakes in error prone players you know Chelsea the Luiz it was still error prone but they had a better system you know especially defensively so they can mask these things or he's not in areas where it's been pulled out and to be fair there's been times you know David Luiz you know what was it um, he's, he's he, you know when Kalajinac against Spurs or um, you know against Liverpool early on in the campaign where he's pulled out wide there's been times Mustafi at the bridge there's been times David Luiz has made mistakes but it's been as a consequence of another mistake and who was it against as well it could have even been against Watford as well um, for for David Luiz as well, for, for I think holding misplaced pass. So these these um, Arteta's got to pattern up these mistakes because again I do think sometimes it's not always Luiz's fault. It's a pattern of errors. But we we probably would describe all our centre halves as fairly error prone. Um. So but Luiz has had good periods, you know, Mustafi and him. Um. So I'd say you know Luiz has done all right, but he's shown that he's David Luiz and he will let you down. And you know you're not going to teach an old dog new tricks to it to a degree. I think it's been an iffy sign. I give Luiz a five out of ten. He's shown some good periods. He's shown some bookie periods. Um, so yeah, our summer signings have done all right. Hopefully, I want to see better from Pepe next season. Of course, I want to see if Sabio stays here. I want to see Sabio add goals and assists. Obviously, want to see Luis continue to be a leader and cut out those mistakes. Martinelli, there's expectation on you, so I just want you to continue developing and making a difference in your way. Tierney, Tierney knows what to do. Tierney's certified. He's been at Celtic. He knows what to do. He knows what he needs to keep doing. Um, so it is what it is. Um, with with that being said, there's nothing more for me to carry on with people, so I'm going to get out of here. It's always a pleasure speaking with you guys, but it's time to bust out, man. People, DG. I'm out.